Hi, my name is Michael Bartlett and I'm a board member with NCGR. I'm here today interviewing Bill Meridian for upcoming NCGR conference in Baltimore in August. Welcome, Bill. How are you doing today? I'm great, Michael. Thank you. How are you? Doing great, thanks. I understand you're going to be speaking Good. on eclipses this fall. Yes. And what, what, what brought you to eclipses? My teacher was Charles Jane, and he said that eclipses were the most powerful event in astrology. He was a specialist in that area. Unfortunately, he never wrote a book about it. He did some lectures, but I used to hang out at his home. And plus that, I read all the old issues of Dell Horoscope from the 40s into the 50s, during which he predicted most of the course of World War II. And that is where he took the idea of the eclipse path and developed it, but it had all been lost in these old magazines, but thanks to Dell Horoscope and also American Astrology, I, I was able to retrieve all of this data. How wonderful. So when you talk about the eclipse path, meaning the, how the eclipse follows along the path on the planet? Yes, it was the, actually the idea developed uh, from Choinsky, who was a German astrologer who invented, I think it was minor progressions, it was minor or tertiary, and he stated that an eclipse had an, a time orb around it, that it ruled everything within plus, let's say, plus or minus three months. So in other words, if a puppy dog is born, a person is born, a club is opened, a business is started, they all fall under the auspices of that eclipse. Lauren Edward John drove Los Angeles, took that idea and said, well, if you're born near the eclipse, then the path of the eclipse must have some connection to you. And that idea was passed along to Jane, and he developed the idea it was picked up later by Al Morrison and Charles Emerson in New York City in the 70s and developed a little further, and then it was just dropped. So, for example, I was born three days before a solar eclipse that fell on my Venus. The solar eclipse is partial, and it cast a shadow over Eastern Europe, which is where I'm now speaking from. And I didn't realize it until many years later that I developed an interest in free market economics in 71 or 2 at New York University, and it was all developed by Ludwig von Mises and the Austrian School of Economics. I'm right under that eclipse path. I also had a spiritual teacher, Eva Paracos, who used to go into trance and channel a spirit. She was born in Vienna, Austria. My wife is from Vienna, Austria, and I'm currently living here. So I had no thoughts about, I never even saw the sound of music. So I had no thoughts about Vienna, Austria, and, and didn't know all of this. And uh, for example, the eclipse path of Muhammad the prophet runs all from Indonesia, all through the areas in which Islam is strongest, as pointed out by Al Morrison, stopping right about here in Austria, which is about as far as Islam got during their wars of conquest. Uh, for Robert E. Lee, the Confederate general whose statues were now tearing down, his eclipse aspected his Mars, which means he needed a martial profession, and the eclipse cuts the United States right in half across the Mason-Dixon line. So that's how important it can be. Well, wow, it's really fascinating. So not only does the eclipse lay a line on the planet, yes. but it also lays a line on the planet for the individual who's affected by that, that birth. That's very fascinating. That's correct. In addition to that, what, like, uh, on top of that, I mean, not that, that, I mean, that alone is really fascinating and amazing realization to understand, but besides that, what other fascinating or what, what, where, what really has surprised you about eclipses overall? Well, it makes, when you start, when I started doing mundane astrology for Del Horoscope in 1990, I had no idea where to begin. And the answer to the question is you begin with the eclipses. And Charles said, if you have an eclipse, conjunct or opposite your sun, uh, this is important. If it is opposite your sun, it's like getting hit and run down on a soccer field. You get knocked down. If it is conjunct your sun, it strengthens your will and you shine. Um, if you... Most of us are not like President Trump. He's born on the day of a lunar eclipse and only needs five hours of sleep a night. That's typical of a person born on the day of an eclipse. I was born three or four days before one, and my life has worked out completely unexpectedly. Um, but for most people, uh, they will, some will, experiences, will experience eclipses by secondary progression, which can change your whole life. If you have an eclipse on your birthday, it will mark a year to remember. But the most amazing thing is if you use mundane astrology, you just run a scan of, for example, the last eclipse was at 15 Capricorn. So you run a scan of all, plant, all charts 
in a mundane database, which I have of leaders and countries, 15 degrees Capricorn plus or minus five degrees conjunction and opposition. And what do you get? You get the horoscope of Venezuela. Well, I had the eclipse opposite their cancer sun. Look at the shape they're in now. The eclipse was opposite the sun for the beginning of the Russia investigation. Well, the Senate investigating committee said there's no connection between Russia and the election. So eclipse opposite the sun uh, knocks it down. Um, China and the United States began diplomatic relations with the sun. That sun is opposed by this eclipse and they're having trade problems. But the next eclipse in July will be conjunct the suns of all three. So already we have Gerald, Gerald Nadler renewing a Russia, new Russia investigation. We will probably see a resolution of the U.S.-Chinese uh, trade relations, probably in the U.S.'s favor, and we will see some relief in Venezuela. So when you can do that, you know, right now I'm writing for about 2020. Uh, when you can do things like this and pick things out of the year, use in advance, it's uh, really astounding. It's so exciting because um, what you're saying is a, it, that the opposition comes in, it's almost like a, if the issue gets revealed and then the conjunction comes in, you know, which is a new birth. And it's like, then there's some like a rapprochement or, or a reconciliation period where there's able the opportunity then to come forth and, and make a different opportunity than what has come before. Yeah. And sometimes it works in the reverse. You know, the eclipse hits your sun. Uh, this happened to, oh, that old uh, scandal in England, they made a, a there's a movie on youtube about it it was the uh, the guy was in line to become in the early 60s the prime minister of england and there was an eclipse conjunct his son and six months later it was, it was an eclipse opposite his son he got caught up in the christine keeler it was john profumo he was a defense minister he was on his way to becoming the prime minister eclipse conjunct the son six months later eclipse opposite the son he's caught up in the christine keeler prostitute affair and that ended his political career. Wow. I think I'm going to have to go through my ephemeris and look to see when eclipses are going to be hitting my planets now. <laughs> well, um, this is the sun. And the sun, Charles said, the sun is the most important planet. And so eclipses conjunct and opposite the sun, plus or minus five degrees, are the single most important effect in mundane astrology. And whenever I do a forecast, I start with that. So it it's like panning for gold. You want to get the nuggets. And this gets you to the nuggets very fast. And you don't have to go through. I used to run off with an old DOS printer and the early Hewlett Packard printers. I used to run off pages and pages and pages. Eclipse conjunct Neptune, eclipse conjunct Pluto and Mars. And uh, now I limit it to the sun. And that zeroes you in right away on what is important. Well, it sounds, I mean, there's no bigger nugget than the sun. <laughs> So thank you, Bill. This has really been a fascinating sure. talk. I'm excited to see your talk in at our conference on Labor Day. I'll see you in Baltimore. Thank you so much, Bill. Have a wonderful day.